Hi, my name is Max Lebovitz, and I'm going to be narrating this report on WikiLeaks today. A wiki, according to Wikipedia, is the easy creation and editing of any number of interlinked web pages via a web browser using a simplified markup language. It involves crowdsourcing, which is using outsourced user generated content to provide information for a website. The creation of this site is a direct result of the evolution of the internet. As the internet shifts to become more interactive and accessible, sites like WikiLeaks have cultivated. WikiLeaks is considered a whistleblowing website. A whistleblower is somebody within an organization who releases confidential information about the organization partaking in illegal or unethical activities. Here is an overview on WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks was founded in 2006 and is currently represented by Julian Assange, editor-in-chief. However, it's reported that the site was actually conceived by Chinese dissidents in protest of the sentencing of Shi Tao, a journalist who was sentenced to prison for releasing an email about the events in Tiananmen Square in 1989. It is also claimed that other founders of WikiLeaks include mathematicians, cryptographers, a former U.S. intelligence analyst, and startup technologists from throughout the world. Besides Assange, all other members remained anonymous. Nevertheless, Assange was a person who propelled into the media spotlight as a spokesperson for WikiLeaks. His beliefs are in freedom of press, censorship, and investigative journalism. The self-claimed purpose of the site is to provide information, transparency, and debate regarding oppressive regimes throughout Asia, the former Soviet bloc, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the Middle East. WikiLeaks founders explain that they believe that transparency in government activities leads to reduced corruption, better governments, and stronger democracies. They say all governments can benefit from increased scrutiny by the world community, as well as their own people. They also believe the scrutiny requires information. WikiLeaks first drew significant attention with a video posted on July 7th of 2007. The video showed a U.S. Army helicopter in Baghdad opening fire on a group of men that included a Reuters photographer and his driver. Also, they opened fire on a van that came to pick up the wounded men. Reportedly, none of the members of the group were taking hostile action, contrary to the Pentagon's initial cover of the story. WikiLeaks got even more attention in July of 2010 when 77,000 classified U.S. military field reports from Afghanistan were released to the public. Soon after, 400,000 more were released. In November of 2010, WikiLeaks disclosed a number of U.S. Department cables that revealed a hidden world of backstage international diplomacy. It divulged candid comments from world leaders and detailed occasional U.S. pressure tactics overseas. These comments have caused international tension for the U.S. and its allies and have brought WikiLeaks a range of press. Here we ask the question, is the release of confidential information to the public doing more damage than good? To determine this, we have to look at both the positive and negative implications for social and political issues. One thing's for sure is that the U.S. government strongly opposes it. As seen in this graph here, after the Afghan war documents were released, the U.S. was a split in terms of their opinion on WikiLeaks. In general, Democrats were much more in favor than Republicans. However, after the release of the cables, the numbers went around 2 to 1 opposing WikiLeaks. As you can see from the cat in the hat cartoon here, many are blaming WikiLeaks for the drama caused from the release of the information on their website rather than the people who disclose the information to WikiLeaks. Here we raise the question of who is really to blame and the notion of perhaps nobody should be blamed at all. As a result of all this blame, Julian Assange has actually received threats in his life and has had to spend some of his time living as a fugitive. There are a number of reasons that people are pro WikiLeaks. First of all is regarding the First Amendment. Actually, in 2008, a U.S. federal judge ordered WikiLeaks domain to be shut down. Yet, within a month of this ruling, the same judge reversed the injunction citing First Amendment issues, which would restrict constitutionally bound freedom of speech and the press. Additionally, people see WikiLeaks as a mechanism for demoting war. There have been a very direct and strong wave of empathy and conscience from general public that has taken a strong anti-war stance because of the documents from WikiLeaks. Some even consider WikiLeaks to be a tool for anti-terrorism. They consider what could have happened if WikiLeaks had been around before 9-11 to prevent the disaster. Other WikiLeaks endorsers see the information released being as part of our civil rights. Foreign policy analysts and critics have praised the release of information for exposing the foreign policy failings of the Obama administration. Unfortunately, that's not that great for the U.S., especially Democrats. 
In lieu of all the controversy, Julian Assange was actually named the Man of the Year by Time magazine. He was recognized as a significant contributor to society. People against WikiLeaks have numerous arguments as well. One big one lies in the reliability of information. Often the information released is poor and has little or no editing. Also the information is independent from mainstream media, creating a separation between WikiLeaks and what's displayed in the news and other various sources of media. Another strong argument against WikiLeaks pertains to the possibility of leaked information getting into the wrong hands. U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder announced that WikiLeaks diplomatic reports are actually harmful to American troops stationed throughout the world as they expose vital American positions. Some even say that the release of information by WikiLeaks can encourage war, provides justification on why not to withdraw from Afghanistan, including the weakened state of the Afghan government and the momentum that the Taliban has been accumulating over the past year. There is also the issue of putting the sources of content in danger. People tend to point fingers when information is released, and although WikiLeaks tries to protect the identity, it's hard to say how secure this information is kept and whether or not it can be obtained. Probably the biggest argument against WikiLeaks is regarding the political tension it has caused between the U.S., its allies, and between other foreign governments. WikiLeaks released sensitive U.S. diplomatic files that the Obama administration said could damage U.S. relations with friends and allies. Examples of this are documents that suggested U.S. diplomats were ordered to engage in low-level spying to obtain foreign diplomats' personal information, also regarding the treatment of prisoners in Guantanamo. Another controversial leak regarded King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, who apparently disclosed to the U.S. its not-so-nice thoughts about its neighbor Iran. This could have caused huge international problems between the U.S., Saudi Arabia, and Iran. So what's next for WikiLeaks? Well, first of all, Julian Assange, who has overcome his own controversies of late, is still running the site and claims that the site is still going to be going strong. As far as scandals, who knows what information is going to be released next, what good or harm it's going to cause. Some are currently blaming WikiLeaks for the Arab uprising of 2011. However, Bradley Manning is the supposed source of these leaks. So again, lies the question, who is to blame? It's reasonable to assume that a lot of copycat sites are going to steal WikiLeaks' style of releasing confidential information. However, it's hard to say what the result of this is going to be and what damage it could possibly cause. One thing's for sure, WikiLeaks, a necessary evil, is going to be sticking around for a while.